My 33F best friend 32F told me that she and my husband 36N had a semi-affair almost a year ago. She wants my forgiveness because she wants me back in her life. We've been married 7 years now and it was mostly okay. However, after 5-6 years of marriage a huge part of me wanted a divorce. I wasn't happy with who he'd become, I felt lonely. He was too caught up in work and the marriage felt stale. We had S time, but it was only because we're both HL and it didn't bring us closer or fix anything. I told my husband what was on my mind back then and it hurt him tremendously. He did start to make effort, but at that point, I mentally was checking out of the marriage. We would have separated if finances allowed it. So I told him give me time to think and we'll try to work on it. During that time, I had a small falling out with my best friend as well and we weren't chatting much either. My husband and she were always pretty close as well. He doesn't open up to his guy friends, but he said it's easier to do with women. He did ask me before if he could talk to my best friend about our issues and I told him I didn't care. Truthfully I did care, but I felt his needs outweighed mine. This led to them becoming very very close. They would meet up to chat at dinner, or at pubs at least once a week. I was never suspicious until one night. He left home at 8 p.m. saying he was meeting Emily my best friend for dinner. He's normally back between 10 and 11 p.m., but this time he came home close to 2 a.m. I was livid. He said after dinner they drove to the waterfront to talk. The waterfront area is a well-known area in my city where couples park up and fool around. We did it a couple of times there as well. He swore they just talked and nothing happened. I stupidly trusted them. This happened two more times before I eventually told him he was getting too close to her. And that made me very uncomfortable. Coincidentally, she started dating another guy soon after, so they sort of stopped seeing each other. Their dating period was late summer last year 2020, almost a year ago. However, last week she begged me to come over to talk. During this conversation, she told me how she and my husband admitted they had feelings for each other. They considered an affair or relationship but didn't want to disrespect me. She said they never kissed or had S time. But she did say they had phone S time once and exchanged nudes. She said she started dating a new guy right after this incident. She said I was right to suspect something back then. She said they were both feeling vulnerable and had no intentions for anything romantic to happen. She said for the first few dates she felt no attraction to him. She said what changed was how gradually she saw how well he understood her and made her laugh and realized that no guy she dated was as emotionally deep as we my husband. I get that. He is a very good conversationalist and he and her always had a good friendship since I introduced them. While I was totally mad, I appreciated her frank honesty and understand that they were two people who I genuinely liked and part of me wouldn't even be too mad if they hooked up once they were happy. Now I called it a semi-affair because it ended before it really started. She said she only told me now because she and my husband swore they'd keep it a secret. But she said she felt it was my right to know. She begged me not to tell my husband that I knew, but I told her I could not promise her that. She said, he also wanted to tell me as well, and they deliberated long and hard about it, but decided for everyone's best interest, I shouldn't know. She said she missed my friendship so much and how I'm more important to her than any other person in her life. So, this was a week ago. I've been playing it cool with my husband since, but it's eating me up inside. I have forgiven her. I just don't know what to do, tell him? Forgive him? Be understanding? Reddit, I really need your help. What would you do in my position? Also, please know the last six months have been the best in our marriage. He admitted that he was sort of having a midlife crisis and depression back then and zoned out from me. He's been a different person since, someone I truly love and can spend my life with. Story 2, I'm 26 F pretty sure my fiancé 29 M is sleeping with my sister 24 F. My fiancé and I have been together for almost 5 years now, and we have been engaged for close to 10 months. We've had an absolutely wonderful relationship, 
he's kind, sweet, hard-working, and extremely attractive. While we've had our ups and downs like every other couple, we've always been able to communicate very effectively and understand the other's feelings in any sort of conflict. He's everything I want in a man and I love him dearly. Anyways, yesterday while he was out, I was transferring some photos from a recent vacation we had taken onto my laptop. Some of the photos were on his laptop, so I decided to go onto his laptop and quickly get the photos onto a USB to transfer onto mine. When I went on his laptop, I saw that he had FB open, and also noticed that he was messaging my sister. I found this kind of strange, I mean they're not really that close and don't talk to one another unless we're at a family event. So I open up the message box, and it shows a lot of messages between the two. In them, it contains a ton of dirty texts, nudes, and messages to meet up. I was absolutely shocked when I saw this. It turns out whenever he tells me I'm going out with the boys, he's really been ducking my sister. He hadn't shown any signs of being unhappy or cheating, I mean we're getting married in two months for God's sakes. And my sister, our entire lives we've been so close to one another. She's the one who I rant to, spill all my secrets, get advice and support from, she even helped my fiancé propose to me. I just can't believe they would do this to me. I'm sorry if this post is all over the place, I've consumed more alcohol in the past 24 hours than in the past 6 months. I was sure we were going to spend the rest of our lives together, and then this happens. He's been at his mother's house for the past few days visiting, and on the 23rd we're heading back to my family's house for Christmas. I have absolutely no clue as to how to deal with this, how do I even act around my sister and fiancé knowing they've been having an affair? I'm devastated that the two people closest to me could betray me so deeply. I just don't understand. Please 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 help me. Edit, thank you all so much for all your advice and support. I appreciate all your kind words during this difficult time. Some people have requested an update, I'll try to provide one perhaps a couple days after Christmas. Story 3, my F23 boyfriend's M23 birthday gift for me involved nude photos of him. A female friend who has confessed her love to him took the photos. So a little bit of background, we're both 23, we've been dating for the better part of 16 months, and everything has been going pretty well so far. This may be the man that I want to marry, but something just came up and I'm uncomfortable with him. My birthday was this week and he got me kind of a gag birthday gift that I thought was hilarious. It turns out that there are services that will let you submit photos and you'll get them in the form of a blanket. I came home one day to find that my bed now had a queen-sized blanket that was made up of a collage of six giant nude photos of him doing different posts in the woods, climbing a tree, holding a rock in front of his junk, etc etc. I found it hilarious and honestly I thought that it was the best gift that I can recall receiving in a long time, certainly the funniest. A little later in the night I had the sudden realization that, as these photos were of him, someone else must have needed to have taken them. I asked him who took them and he dropped the bombshell. He has this photographer friend, let's call her Hannah. I like Hannah and I think that she's a cool person, but she's confessed her love to my BF twice, and I was under the impression that they had pretty much stopped talking. She's a really talented photographer, but it makes me incredibly uncomfortable that they were spending time in the woods naked like that, and that she probably still had digital files from the photo shoot. He said that she took probably about two dozen pictures, and they looked through them to see which six were the best. That means that they were sitting in front of a computer, looking through dozens of nude photos of him, all while she has admitted in the past to being completely in love with him. I can't tell if I'm overreacting or not. She's a talented photographer and I know that she's taken plenty of nude non sexual photos, but this just feels really creepy. When I brought it up with my BF, he kind of just got uncomfortable and brushed it off telling me that it was no big deal, that this wasn't the first time she'd taken nudes of him she'd included nude photos of him along with nude photos of dozens of other people, including her parents, in her college senior project, and that there was nothing sexual or romantic about it. 
I get where he's coming from, but I just feel really weird about it. Story 4, me 30f with my friend 34m of 2 years, will not accept that I do not want to date his friend. I'm fudging details because those involved are Redditors. I becoming very annoyed here and need some advice. I moved to a city and met a friend Eric who was gracious enough to bring me into his social group and help me meet new people. I have been in this city for two years, I travel often for work and have had a really hard time meeting anyone local, new girlfriends and men alike. I let Eric know this after we'd gotten to know each other a bit, because I felt that people can't help you if you don't ask. I'm a pretty cool person and have never had trouble building and maintaining relationships with the right people. So it's really been about opportunity to meet new girlfriends. Romantically, is a whole other issue. I've been involved in a few abusive relationships, physically, emotionally, and financially. Well, Eric decides he has his best friend who would love me. He tells his friend I look like Scarlett Johansson and sent him pictures of me. He talked me up so much to his friend, and all the while I just cringed. He literally did it right in front of me. He noticed my face and said I should just be open to possibilities. Now I was immediately uninterested in meeting this friend because I'd just met Eric, and really just wanted to build some platonic friendships. Throwing in blind setups was just a bad idea. This was before Eric described his friend to me. I model for a living, so I work out a lot and have to stay in shape most of the year, and I'm 5 feet 8 inches barefoot. I also own my own tech company that's been quite successful. I will be leaving the modeling industry to run it full time, soon. In a man I prefer someone fit, who has a runner's build, and at least 5 feet 8 inches. That's my sweet spot. I never get hit on by men who meet that description. I'm constantly hit on by men who are pushing 5 feet 5 inches, and they'll never understand it. However, I digress, Eric told me his friend was super sweet but was unlucky in love because of his weight he's about 300 pounds. Eric said that he thought I would be great for his friend because I was beautiful, ambitious, and could help him lose weight. At this point I just really felt like nothing I wanted was being taken into consideration. 1. I had already told him I didn't want to be set up and two. He never asked me what types of men I was attracted to, to know that I would not be attracted to his friend. It was all about what I could offer his friend who I had no interest in dating and consistently made very clear. Once again I was being asked to bring everything to the table in exchange for some male companionship. I could be his friend's ambitious Scarlett Johansson with the great personality Eric's words and help him get into shape. We all got together as a group and went out. It was a great time. Eric's girlfriend was super sweet and also a model so I chatted with her more. Eric's friend was there and he's genuinely an amazing person. He's very nice and I'm sorry he's had issues with dating because of his weight but I'm just not attracted to him. Eric won't let it go, he makes comments about me keeping an open mind etc. Here's my thing, I'm tired of entering into relationships with men and overlooking important things such as looks. I feel like women are constantly asked to do this and I'm sick of it. In the past I'd done it on my own, just thinking I could get past not being attracted to them. The men who abused me were all very nice at first, And because of that I looked past not being attracted to them because they offered companionship and seemed kind. No, attraction is important, and newsflash there are plenty of not conventionally attractive men who are insane holes. The men I've dated in the past have not been my type, but because they pursued me I thought that meant they were genuinely interested in me and not what I have to offer. I don't know where society got the idea that men who are overlooked because of looks automatically have hearts of gold. I shouldn't have to compromise on attraction, just to meet a decent romantic partner, no one should. I'm not looking for George Clooney for goodness sake. I'm pissed that Eric sees what all I could potentially bring to the table for his friend, in exchange for his friend's kindness. Why does he only see me as being good enough to be a fixer for his friend? Telling me to keep an open mind? 
I'm not asking anyone to come to the table and fix me and my issues. I get that Eric is coming from a loving place for his friend, but it's not a fair place for me. The problem is, I really like all these people as friends, but if Eric keeps this up his friend's feelings are going to get hurt and I'm afraid I'll get kicked out of the group. It's taken me so long to meet people I connect with here, and this is what happens? How do I make Eric back off and keep these friends? Help! Edit, formatting and grammar sorry guys. Story 4, update, me 30f with my friend 34m of 2 years, will not accept that I don't want to date his friend. So after I made my original post things seemed to be fine. Then I learned over the course of a few more instances who this guy really is. First I should mention that while I met Eric 2 years ago in this new city, he is not a model but works in the industry. I'm trying really hard to not be obvious because everyone involved uses Reddit. We worked on one of my shoots together and the owner of the video production company later randomly called me and asked me if he could take nude photos of me. Naturally I wouldn't be able to tell a soul including his wife because this was a secret hobby of his. I told that guy my answer was a hard no and never heard from him again. I sat on that disturbing situation for a while then one day told Eric. His response was an underwhelming everyone has their issues. So I followed up with I just think you should know, in case you're introducing models to him for networking purposes, you know what he's capable of. Eric responded with a flat thanks. Eric didn't know the production company owner, they met on the set of my shoot. So I don't know, we aren't friends from way back but I expected some sort of loyalty at least in his response. I wasn't expecting him to say I'll never work with the guy, but he couldn't have cared less. Eric continued to make comments about setting me up with his friend, to which I continued to make clear I was uninterested. Then finally we all got together for brunch. At one point Eric and I were left at the table alone and I said alright let's talk. I wanted to schedule a shoot a couple months out that he would be involved in. He immediately assumed I wanted to chastise him about continually suggesting that I date his friend. I said no, that's not what I was intending to discuss, but to reiterate your friend is a great person, but I am in no way interested. That was the last time he brought it up. So I felt he had the ability to be reasonable if pressed, but certainly pushed boundaries. One night we were playing card games and I started to notice that he seemed annoyed with everyone all the time. He seemed incapable of being challenged even in the slightest ways, often pouting. He'd get up, throw his head back and leave the table etc. His wife was constantly apologizing to him for things that didn't seem like offenses. At one point he got up and left the table and she said sorry to him, no kidding, five times in rapid succession. As she was apologizing to him for one of his imagined slights, her friend piped up and said you don't need to apologize. She'd been friends with this guy for longer than she knew her husband, so that was my signal something was up. I didn't know them to comment on their relationship. They just got married so they could literally be driving each other up a wall. However, the friend's response let me know that perhaps this wasn't first-year marriage problems. This was after another outing where he was flat out being mean to her. When she walked away he said she was having an anxiety fit. Didn't seem that way to me. Anyone would be frazzled by their significant other being a jerk to them in public. I noticed that aside from the one friend of hers piping up for her, his other friends just sort of sat quietly. If you haven't noticed I don't easily develop opinions about things. Being a model means that people perceive you as and treat you as an idiot constantly. I've endured my fair share of false perceptions so I try to feel people out until they hang themselves. Fast forward to the 4th of July, we're up on their rooftop and the sun was beaming. I was wearing a shirt dress with a sports bra and running shorts underneath. I pulled down the top of my dress and tied it around my waist. So imagine I'm sitting in a sports bra, with a bunch of clothes tied around my waist. At some point we started discussing Marvel Comics a mutual interest of ours. I commented how I was tired of the franchise not developing Storm and Rogue storylines. 
He then awkwardly chimed in that if women wanted to be perceived differently they needed to change the way people saw them, manage the tea at tits and ass. It was the most random, irrelevant, and ridiculous thing I'd ever heard. Everyone else just got quiet and looked at him. I challenged him. I told him that Wolverine runs around entire movies with no shirt on at all, so what was his point? He then made another bizarre comment of everyone has to do their part, if I know a friend is an alcoholic I'm not going to put alcohol in front of him. I asked so you're saying that men are addicted to women's bodies and as a result are helplessly incapable of controlling themselves and their own actions. So instead, the woman is responsible for managing the oppression? He repeated everyone has to do their part, it's not fair, but it's how it is. This went on, before I realized it was idiotic and I was done with the conversation. His wife sat quietly, everyone did. At that moment I knew I would never be close friends with him. In my opinion I felt he revealed himself as a misogynist and it made perfect sense that he felt he could set me up with his best friend, where I would be bringing majority of the benefits to the table. Side note, he is obsessed with being right and sounding intellectual. If you make a counter argument he will smirk. Look down and to the left as if you're the biggest idiot. I recently got into gaming as a way to manage the mental stress of growing my business. They all game as well. Recently we were playing online and Eric threw a fit while we were losing a game. I told him all the things he said we were doing wrong, he was doing himself as well. He got louder, and I got louder. I will not be spoken over by some guy who I feel is loud and wrong all the time. Then he said you're new to the group so you don't know this, but I don't like be talked to that way. Oh dear, I've definitely noticed, again, everyone got quiet. His best friend was also playing with us and said to him regarding the game Eric you seem to be the only one who feels this way. To which Eric responded well make me not feel this way. His best friend said I don't know how to not make you not feel this way. Eric went into full pout mode and would not speak. Anyone familiar with gaming knows that if you get into a game against other people, you have to commit, let's get a deserter penalty. Well Eric didn't commit on his end and we all got a deserter penalty, because he had to go use the restroom. He didn't bother saying a word in advance, he just left. When he came back someone asked why we got a deserter penalty, and his best friend struggled to explain why, because he was trying to avoid just saying what Eric did. My final realization was that this guy over time has conditioned his friends and family to walk on eggshells for him. I'd had enough. We all ignored his pouting and kept playing, so I'm back on the friendship market. I won't be proactively trying to hang out with them. Although I do find everyone around him wonderful, I suspect none of them would be friends with me anyways if he caused enough of a stir about it. Sorry I'm exhausted while typing this. So please forgive me for not including each Redditor's names, regarding meeting friends, our relationship suggested meetup groups which I've tried but will give it another go. I had another person comment that they were surprised I was having trouble dating in tech. I can't explain it more beyond most of the men in this exact niche of the tech industry are much much older and married. So this particular part of the industry isn't bustling with dating options for me. I had a redditor comment that she too encountered many bad apples because of her looks as well. She had to learn that many ways these men were asking her out seemed harmless or even romantic, but were quite the opposite. Her comment was so dead on for me that I copied it to my computer to look at every now and then as a reminder. I also want to reiterate that dating is not a priority for me right now. I truly am focused on building a platonic friendship base here so that I can find some balance. Edit, to clarify I work with Eric in the modeling industry, my soon-to-be full-time business is in tech and completely separate. It's just that someone asked why I couldn't find a date in that field so I mentioned it. Sorry for the confusion. Edit 2, the gaming community has been incredibly welcoming and it's much appreciated. Although, I'm shocked only one person guessed the game I was referring to. Smite baby, Redditor's reactions, Redditor1, I wanted to point out one thing you said in your post, 
If you haven't noticed I don't easily develop opinions about things. Being a model means that people perceive you as and treat you as an idiot constantly. I've endured my fair share of false perceptions so I try to feel people out until they hang themselves. Just because you've been unfairly judged in the past, does not mean that you are obliged to give people a million chances to redeem themselves before you finally cut them out of your life. In short, assuming someone is dumb because they're physically attractive is unfair. But assuming someone is in a shoal because you've observed them mistreating other people with impunity is sound judgment. As an aside, between this update about Eric today and the post yesterday about Brian the psycho creeper best friend of an op's fiancé can someone please explain to me how some completely crazy douchebags managed to maintain a circle of enabling sycophants? Reddit or follow up between this update about Eric today and the post yesterday about Brian the psycho creeper best friend of an op's fiancé can someone please explain to me how some completely crazy douchebags managed to maintain a circle of enabling sycophants? You should google the missing stare on the provocracy, and the captain awkward and creeps in friend groups. They're very interesting reads. I would guess that they maintain these relationships the same way that abusive relationships start. Their behavior changes slowly and people adapt to it and work around it and that becomes their new normal. It takes a new perspective to see how dysfunctional the relationship is. Redditor 2, yay having boundaries. I think you've got your head on your shoulders quite nicely, and I do think you can find other platonic friends that have less toxic imbalances in the group. Good luck, kick ass. Redditor 3, I had another person comment that they were surprised I was having trouble dating in tech. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha. Ha. I'm a woman in tech too and just, wow. While I'm sure many people in tech are nice, well-adjusted human beings, in my personal experience, I've met several whom are huge misogynists. Be prepared to see this problem again. You may want to try to suss it out early. So you can just cut your losses before you get too invested in anyone. It's really not worth being friends with these people. We're trained to let other people's feelings always take priority over our own. Please don't feel bad for cutting off a friend and not giving them a chance based on a single misogynistic comment. Your time is too valuable for this. There are so many people out there who aren't like this. Redditor 4 this guy sounds like he's got himself surrounded in a little bubble of people who can stand him not stand up to him, ever. It sounds like you don't want to be inside that bubble, and for that I don't blame you.